Hi friends. In this episode, we are going to discuss about the tools that an editor has to narrate a story. We will discuss about a cut, a fade, and dissolves. Let us begin with a cut. A cut is the most basic tool that the editor uses. A cut is done between two shots. On the other hand, we can say that when we join two shots together, we have a cut. If we look at the practice of watching images, we'll see that while we were watching comic strips, we had gaps in between two images. Image one and image two often were not continuous images. The audience was smart enough to bridge the gap between the two images. But in case of film, unfortunately, this advantage is not present because the images are moving images. So, a shot should seamlessly move from one shot to the other. So, a cut should be something like a connection between these two shots where the audience cannot understand that there is a cut. So making the cut invisible is the most challenging part of the editor's job. While making a cut, there are five principles that need to be followed. They are, a cut should carry the action from one shot to the other. Secondly, it should give dramatic emphasis. Third, it should add information. Fourth, it should establish a space. And fifth, it should establish the sense of time. Let us see how action is continued from one shot to the other, which is also called cutting on action. A cut is done generally to take the narrative forward. When we are following a character, the character may be doing something within a given space or he may go from one space to the other. In both cases, we may require what is called a cut because when he is within a particular space, he may be doing things which can be watched from a particular angle and distance and we can change the angle and distance to continue with what he is doing. Especially in case where he is shifting spaces, we can definitely use a cut and we show a person leaving a space and entering another space. The general human tendency is to anticipate and speculate what a person is doing in front of him. Say for example, a person is trying to drink water. He will move from position A to position B, hold the glass of water and drink it. When the audience is actually watching the person going from position A to position B and he is actually heading towards the glass of water, the audience can easily speculate that the person is going to drink that glass of water. A cut can be made at any point within the action. When he is holding the glass and when he is drinking the glass of water. When the cut is made within the action, since the audience is already speculating what is going to happen, the cut becomes invisible. Because his idea of action is still continuous from shot A to shot B. Let us see an example from a film. In this film, let us see the master shot first, where a couple of travelers come near a well and they are really thirsty. One of them is injured, so the second guy pulls out water from the well and gives the water to the person who is injured. 
and later he drinks the water himself. This entire action can be narrated in a single shot where we see the characters coming in, taking the water out of well and then drinking the water. But to make the sequence more interesting, we will break the action into parts. The first part may be where everything is established and he comes near the well. The second may be the shot of him pulling the water out of the well The third may be the person is giving water to the person who is injured and later he drinks water himself on the next shot. This kind of editing makes the film more watchable and entertaining. The second principle of a cut is dramatic emphasis. We need a cut to emphasize on a particular dramatic point. But what is a dramatic point? If you do an experiment where two people are talking to each other and if you are the third man sitting in within that conversation and the two people who are talking are not aware that you are there. Just watch these two people talking. When these two people talk, you will look at the person who is talking and as the conversation develops, you will shift your look to the person who is listening and come back to the person who is talking depending on what the conversation is all about. In certain cases, you will see that if character A has said something which should affect character B, you will definitely shift your look to character B and see how he is reacting. This is called dramatic emphasis in a conversation where you emphasize a particular reaction, a particular emotion from a character and you are also telling this story to the audience. This is the secret of an editor. The editor also needs to empathize with the person who is listening. If he can do that, he can easily make out where to use the reaction shot where to have a shot of the person who is talking and where to cut when the other person is talking. Dramatic emphasis is also seen in early films like Pudovkin's mother or very strangely it was used in the film called The Lonedale Operator. In that film the entire film was shot with longish shots where it was theatre-like. In the last scene where the girl actually manages to uh, handle a couple of burglars with a thing which is not a pistol, 
later reveals that it's nothing but a sliding wrench. This shot was used as a close-up shot to emphasize the fact that she was using that tool to frighten the burglars. Later, we have seen this happening throughout the film editing history. In films, we often see that when a conversation gets intense, we tend to go closer to the person's facial expression. Getting closer to a person's expression obviously makes the emotion larger than life and the audience can easily relate to the emotions that are being provoked by these shots. So these are elements of dramatic emphasis. The third function of a cut is to add information. By the term adding information, we mean to add something which is not otherwise visible in the master shot or is implied in the master shot. In the example that we see here, we will see the guy comes close to the well and looks into the well and then he decides what to do next. In the master shot, we see him looking into the well, but we don't see what is inside. To give this information or this additional information, we need another shot, which is a cut, which gives the information that there is water or there is no water inside that well. Obviously, this is very important for the narrative because if there is water, the narrative will say something else. And if there is no water, the obvious expression of the narrative or the characters will change. Apart from carrying the narrative forward, the editor also needs to establish a space where the scene is happening. In this particular example, we'll see that from traveling from one scene to the other, we'll see that the shot of the entire party sequence is seen first. Then we cut into another closer segment of the party scene and the third shot becomes the shot of the character that the narrative is all about. So the editor uses two shots before we enter the shot of the actual narrative or the shot with the actual characters. A cut can also give us the sense of time. The typical shot of sunset or a sunrise or if we have the normal activities of a village or city really wants to prove that the time of the narrative is such. It's either morning or evening. Shots are often used before we enter into a particular scene of the narrative, like empty roads or busy roads, like an empty market space or a very busy market space. Editors often use two, three shots to establish the space and the time of that particular narrative section. So these are the basic functions of a cut that we discussed. The cuts that are coming one after the other are not just narratives. They often mean something more than the narrative itself, like establishing space, time, adding information, etc. Now we'll discuss about fades. Fades are of two kinds. One is a fade in and another one is called a fade out. 
Fade in is the gradual appearance of a shot from black. This has probably come directly from the practice of watching theatres. In a theatre, when the screens are pulled, we see the lights appearing on stage and then the action begins. This gives us the feeling of a beginning of something. So this has also been used in films for starting something new. Similarly, fade out is the gradual disappearance of a shot into black. Fade out has also got the reverse meaning, that is, the end of certain scene or a segment of a film, etc. We have also seen fade in and fade out used within a single shot. This has been used in montage sequences where we are trying to show the passage of time. A person who is getting ready for office and he reaches office after getting onto a bus or a train and then walking down the road and finally reaching office can be used with fade in and fade outs and the passage of time is thus revealed. In an example from Charlie Chaplin's Gold Rush, we can see a fade out has been used as a time lapse tool. Time lapse because the scene needs certain time in between. A fade out implies that that scene ends and the next fade in implies that there was some time in between. In this example, we'll see that a time has lapsed in between. Goodbye, good luck, said the little fellow. Don't forget to bring home the bacon. Quite interestingly, in certain films, fade in and fade out have been used to provoke the sense of stoppage in time. Let us give you an example from a sequence where an accident has happened. Shots of the broken glass, the crashed vehicle, blood, the human body, etc. are used in sequential fade in and fade outs to prove that time has stopped for a while. This is also a good use of fade in and fade outs in films. A dissolve is also an important tool for the editor to narrate a story. A dissolve happens between two shots. Shot A merges with shot B, which means shot A gradually disappears and at the same time shot B comes on screen. So we see shot A merging with shot B and that is called a dissolve. A dissolve is used in many cases. When a character moves into some fantasy or dreamlike situation, we often use dissolves, where the image of the character dissolves into the scene where we actually see what is happening in his dreams or what is he thinking in his dreams. Dissolves can be thematically motivated and graphically inspired. In an example here, we'll see that dissolves are happening where character A gets into a trance-like situation. Shot A or the shot of the character dissolves into the shot of a water. The third shot which comes as a dissolve is a graphical dissolve, that is, the image of the bird feather graphically merges with the image of the cloth on water. This is called a graphical dissolve. In a dissolve, the audience is often challenged with the shots that are given one after the other. The audience is asked to think why these images are merging from one to the other. 
So this is a very useful psychological exercise for the audience while watching cinema. Dissolves are often used to mend a cut. This is very unfortunate. In situations where a cut doesn't work, we have seen in many films that the editor often use a dissolve to hide the cut behind. But this is not the purpose for which a dissolve should be used. This is not cinematic in nature. A dissolve should mean something. Two shots coming one after the other should also give a third meaning to the audience. Otherwise, a cut is always a better option. Another tool for the editor is a wipe. A wipe is used to wipe out the image that is on the screen with shot B. That is, we have a black band which comes in and removes shot A and replaces it with shot B. Wipes can be of different kinds. It can be a vertical wipe, it can be a horizontal wipe, it can also be a clock wipe. Clock wipe is a transition that has been used in many films. It also, since it resembles a clock, it also gives the sense of passage of time. Wipes nowadays is not so much used in films. It is considered more or less obsolete in films. But early films has used wipes in a number of ways, in a number of situations. Like the examples that we see here. In this episode, we discussed about the basic tools that an editor has to narrate a story. In the next episode, we'll discuss how an editor can achieve seamless editing. Seamless editing is required to make the audience unaware that the editor is actually working behind the screen. <laughs>